why don't you want to go ahead and introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about your art and uh, how you got into um, making you know your art as basically your professional career now. Sure. Well, my name is Mary Jean Runke, and I'm a San Antonio-based artist. I've been painting for the last 10 years. And in the last year, I've actually started to explore mixed media. So my mixed media go-to is acrylic pigments, and then it's with um, archival pen. So I use ink and, um, and paint. And I make uh, mixed media works. They're usually of corvids. So that would be like a raven or a crow, um, a darker bird. And uh, the piece that I'm going to be embellishing today is Renewed Self-Love. This is a recent piece of mine. And um, it was very popular. Um, I make prints. And I do have some clients who like to own a print, but they want to own the original. But unfortunately, the original is already sold. So I like to offer that embellished option for the print. And I'm just honored that today I was offered the opportunity to be here and to go live with you all to show you um, what I like to do and to answer any of your questions. All right, great. Let's see. And uh, we're going to take a really quick look at just some of the stuff that you have bought here and the tools that you use. Yeah, so you'll see I've, I've already poured my paint. Um, I'm using it actually on a wet palette so that uh, the paints will stay nice and wet for this session. I've got my paint brushes. These are the same colors, the same paint brushes that I used for the original work. I also have my micron pens. Uh, I like to use a micron pen. Um, you know, every artist has their preferences for certain inks, certain brands. Um, I prefer Micron. It, it doesn't smear as much as some of the inks you'll find out there on the internet. Um, I also have a varnish spray. Um, this is something we can talk about maybe later, or if you guys have a question about how do you seal uh, your embellished prints. Uh, you're essentially using the same materials, the same varnish that you would use on an original work of art. And then uh, I've got my, my paint cup here paper towels because I like to wipe off my brushes and get that, you know, sometimes take the excess paint off. Right. And uh, let's see here. I think James is, might have gotten it to yeah. read on his camera. Okay, great. I guess we're good now. Okay, great. So we just want to make sure that you get to see everything that she is doing. Um, I'm going to let you start actually. And if you want to just kind of walk us through how you're doing it, like, how did you decide uh, what materials uh, put to print that you were going to print on and then decide that were you using just the inks that you were do or the paint that you used to do your originals? Is that how you decided I'm going to use the paints that I'm doing for my originals and then I'm just going to pick the canvas media and paper media and just see how it takes? So good question. So I was actually inspired by going on a trip once. Mm -hmm. I was actually on a cruise and I was admiring all the artwork that was on the cruise ship. And I had noticed that some of them were prints, but they had embellishments on it. Mm -hmm. um, and when I looked at the material, it was canvas. So um, when it came to myself making prints, I originally started making just the Jaclay prints on canvas. Mm -hmm. And then when certain sales or promotions were being offered through Finer Works, I would try different types of canvas. Well, I happened to be a fan of the artesian or the artisan canvas. And uh, usually I just do it flat. I don't stretch it because I know what my price point is for my clients. So um, when you do stretch it, you know, your price point goes up. So you kind of have to know what is your clients, how much do your clients want to spend? Um, so I don't usually stretch it, but for this training, you know, stretching it is the best that I can demonstrate how to do it for this training. Uh, when it, uh, I guess, since I'm going to start this work, I'm gonna be using the same colors that I used in the original work. So sometimes it's easier to do embellishments like soon after you just painted that work because you can easily forget what was your formulas or what were the colors that you were using in the original because when you're embellishing a print, you want it to feel and look very similar to the original. So does that answer your question? Yes. So um, do you, when you're doing this, do you already know your colors for your palette then because you did the original um how are you for color matching and stuff like that do you feel like you still have to mix uh once you get your print back or is it pretty close to your colors the the print's very close so if anything embellishing is super easy if you're good at coloring in a coloring book this is even easier than that <laughs> because 
essentially all you're doing is you're matching. So it's, it's like doing uh, a paint by number, but you already have the cheat sheet. Yeah. So what I'm doing here, if you look at my palette, you can see some of the similar colors already in here. Now I know that I blend certain colors to get you know certain looks, but I kind of imagine this just like the original. So as I'm doing the embellishments, it's bringing me right back to when I was making the original painting. So uh, when I paint, I usually go left to right because I wanna minimize smears. Uh, when I do embellishments, I usually allot one hour of my time. Sometimes it goes over, but you know, you could embellish a print for hours. So you really have to determine how much time you wanna invest into your, your print. Uh, so for me, it's usually an hour. Uh, but I will work it until I'm very happy with it so that I know that my client, you know, when they receive it, they're happy with it. Now, I think you've been with coming to us at Finer Works for um, since February last year. Yes. It, right? Um, right. And um, when you first came here, uh, were you already doing embellishments? I was not. You were not. So how did you uh, determine what paper media, what canvas media that you wanted to try this on? Like, did you... Um, just use what you were existingly selling already or? That's a good question. So um, I was very new to prints in February as of last year, really. It was uh, something that I was learning by trial and error. Mm -hmm. But I knew that, you know, I had a goal to be able to offer prints because my clients were asking, hey, I want a print of that. I want a print of that. I can't afford the original. But I, I needed to get to the point where, okay, I have the prints. Now I can offer them. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I, I basically just asked for a sample kit. I came here and I believe I met with one of the sales representatives or you know customer service representative. They gave me a package of papers and I just asked a lot of questions. Oh, that's great. And um, what were some of your first questions when you came here? Like, um, that's a good, uh, I guess I was more worried, how can I get the right quality of an image to give to finer works, mm -hmm. you know, and then how does it work when I upload the file? What type of file do I need to give you? How big should that file be? Mm -hmm. So there was a lot of questions. Yeah, and so it was more on the digital kind of end of capture and uh, and submitting it. Yes. So um, why don't we talk about the technique that you do? Because uh, a lot of people that are watching, and, and I, I'm gonna have some questions for you as well, because I, the questions that we get but um, before we get into the, those questions, tell okay. us about the technique that you use to apply the embellishments. And, uh, you know, is there certain types of brushes that you use? Uh, is, uh, is there a certain method of applying the paints? You know, because uh, anyone that paints knows that it, it you know, it, you can't just, you know, coat the brush with a bunch of paint and just start, you know, dragging it across the canvas. You know, it takes finesse. It takes a, a certain level of technique. Okay, hold on. Uh, James, I think we're getting people with some volume issues here. Hold okay. on. Um, let's mm -hmm. see, they're not hearing you. And I am recording, so let's, let's see if this is working. YouTube, okay, the end of the YouTube stream. I don't know if it's because of, of us changing things that cut our stream. Oh, wow, no. we're getting the gremlins today. <laughs> Just be yeah. sure to Well, it says somebody. live on YouTube on here, so mm -hmm. it's, 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 it's going somewhere. Uh, yeah, it's live on um, us here, but I'm and they're showing it's on YouTube, but I'm looking at there and it's not playing. Now, let's see. Do you stream on? Okay, I don't know why our stream has stopped on there, guys. Um, can everybody uh, let me know um, in the chat? Are you able to hear us? Maybe I'll see it. Well, let me let me say record. Yeah. And I mean, I see you sit on here from the thing, but I don't have my audio up because of feedback. Okay, if everybody can use the chat room and let us know, yes, you can hear. Okay, great. Uh, uh, that's good. That's what we wanted to make sure you guys can hear. Yeah. Uh, what we'll do if YouTube completely is killing the stream, um, I, I am recording this and we will upload uh, to YouTube uh, in the entirety after this. Is yeah, right. this, this will be about that. So uh, going back to my original question is, um, tell us about the technique. You know, the 
actual application of of the paint itself the you know how you hold the brush you know do you put a lot of pressure you know do you, you know just yeah get, go, go into some detail about that well, so that's the, there's definitely a technique to it and a lot of it is just kind of learning as you go so for me i'm a self-taught artist so everything I do, it's something that I've learned because I've made plenty of mistakes and then I got really good at making some of those mistakes. So uh, my technique is to use the same colors, the same brushes that I used for the original work. Um, I like to put down, when, when I'm embellishing, I usually do an outline kind of first, just so that, you know, I kind of, I know like, okay, this is my boundaries. And then I'm going to try and stay within those boundaries for the rest of the work. Now, because it's an embellished print, it doesn't have to be exactly like the original. So if, you know, my hand moves or I accidentally, you know, take too large of a stroke and it, and it changes this wing, that's okay. Um, so you, you have to be willing to, you know, be forgiving of yourself if you make a mistake. Because um, I've made plenty of mistakes when I've embellished prints, I'll tell you that. Um, I have two kids at home and sometimes I'm doing this with kids nearby. So you can imagine, you know, if you've got a two-year-old who comes up behind and he's got a toy or he wants a snack, it could, you know, bump your arm. Yeah. And, and because it's acrylic paint, it dries really quick. So it's very forgiving. So, you know, if I paint on mistake and I just paint over that, well, oh my gosh, well, that's okay. You know, in five minutes, it's going to be dry and I can come back there and I can fix it. But that, isn't that the beauty of being able to embellish a print is it, it actually turns a, a print into something that's original. I mean, you know, obviously you don't want to make mistakes, but, mm -hmm. you know, uh, but if there is, you know, slight error or, or as Bob Ross would say, happy, happy, happy little mistakes. Happy, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, it, it, it really does kind of can enhance the, the, the Mary Jean and I were talking about this earlier when we were discussing questions and stuff for this uh, thing. Um, I have an artist that has, they're called destroyed prints. Um, he does silk screening. So all of the ones that are errors and mistakes, they actually auction up really well. Uh, so he puts them on for his, um, for his fan base. And these are the destroyed prints, you know, and he starts at a, you know, I guess like a lower than he would for the original, like, you know, nice silk screen numbered pieces and sells the, the mistakes. And sometimes those sell pretty well because people want that unique, you know, it's like the stamp with the airplane printed upside down. People want that unique one of a kind kind of thing on there. So sometimes mistakes work in your favor. Now, uh, the question I have is, do you, do you, is there any order as far as, you know, when, when you apply the paints and do you go, now you said you like to kind of outline certain areas first, but mm -hmm. what about applying, you know, uh, you know, uh, light colors versus darks, highlights yes. versus shadows. Well, like, yeah, usually I, I do darks first because that, you know, for me, uh, some people describe my artwork as uh, like stained glass. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I have very defined lines in my artwork. It's, it's part of my style. So I usually go with darks and then I do the lights last. Uh, now don't go wrong, I'm going to keep coming through. I usually do, if this is an original work, I'm going to do at least four laps through it. But as an embellished print, I'll probably do two. So, you know, my first time, it's kind of color blocking, blending a bit, you know, but when I come through the second time, that's when I'm going to really get those details for the most part, you know, pulled out, you know, and correct where, okay, I didn't blend that as well. Uh, this work in particular that I made, I made it very loose. Um, I had painted over an original work of art, so I didn't have canvas as a texture to paint on. So it's it's harder to sometimes uh, blend your colors if you don't have a rough surface. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, this work I feel like is going to be a, a simpler one for me to embellish because I was so loose with my strokes. You know, they don't have to blend um, as, um, I don't know what the word would be, but if you looked at my original, my, my works, you'll see that usually my feathers look very realistic. And in here, it, you know, it's it's not as realistic. I was very loose and it, I like that. Is it because the, the realism is uh, within the texture of the paints themselves, you think? Is that what, and uh, with a print, you might not necessarily see as much texture. Is that, you think that could be? That's true. Well, and I feel like with this piece too, it, it, it actually, this, 
a lot of my prints, you, you feel like you still see the dimension, but this one, because I've made it larger, I feel like it's actually a little flatter than my, my original. So when I embellish this, when I'm done, this whole work is going to feel like the original again. It's going to have that yeah. dimension and that texture. You know, it won't feel like a blown up image. No, not at all. What about the, the size that you, uh, when, when you, is there a, a maximum size that you'll blow up? An image if you're planning on embellishing it is like is there a size that takes it you know it's it's just I, I i printed it too big and i i can embellish it but it just you know maybe it's it's you know if i embellish it i'm gonna have to repaint the whole, whole image you know <laughs> yeah um, um i wouldn't say i have a too large um uh, restriction like a, but i have a too small okay because uh i have tried to embellish smaller prints mm -hmm. so like a 12 by 12 and sometimes because I have so much detail in my original work so when it's printed it's too much mm -hmm. you know I would have to have micro brushes and I can't get the same type of uh, blending techniques if I'm using tiny brushes for me I, I like to use a square brush you know it's flat because I can put five different colors on the tip of this brush and then I can pull that color where then it, it looks like a feather. But if if I'm using a tiny brush with less hairs, uh, and it's a point you know pointed tip, I'm gonna not be able to make it feel like the original. Sure. sure. Do you ever use any gel medium? Um, good question. I've experimented, but I, I do not um, right now. What I've been enjoying to use, and I will be using it in this work, wherever you see the pinks and you also see the blues, that actually is interference colors by golden so it, it actually creates like an opalescence um, so based on the light it will change colors and it, it's it's really beautiful and i love it because if you look at a feather there is iridescence in there and uh, to be able to bring that into my artwork i've heard from clients that they they're just in awe because when they received the work they didn't expect it you know and it adds that extra element and this embellished print will have that same element of that iridescence when it hangs in their home. That is like a great way because I know sometimes people also um, they they have maybe gold leaf in their original uh, artwork piece and capturing gold leaf sometimes uh, and and having your print make it you know that's something we yeah. get a lot of questions yeah. on. For print, printing the the metallic. I mean we we have the capabilities but it's it's not something that you can easily offer mm -hmm. in an online ordering process um and um <coughs> the, the the metallic uh inks don't always capture the same level of of uh what, what is the word i'm on that does, doesn't quite capture what your metallic paints can capture yeah. doesn't that 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 metallic look they, they seem almost kind of lackluster in, in, yes. in comparison, even when you're using metallic inks. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it is kind of one of those things where if you, and we tell people this, if you're going to embellish a print, or if you want that metallic Embellish it in. Yep. You, yeah, you, you really need to do that. Yes, yeah. actually, um, not too long ago, I did a print, it's of um, a piece called Faith. And that piece has gold where the light is hitting the crow and the feathers are on the neck. Mm -hmm. And when I made the print, it actually uh, had a slight green tint. So I wasn't a fan of, of that green tint, but I had already printed them. So it wasn't like I could have redo it. So what I did was I embellished them. So then anyone who ordered faith, they ended up getting it embellished. And, you know, for me, it was, oh, it's a mistake on my editing. I should have brought up that, you know, gold color and made sure it wasn't green. But, you know, when the client received it, they were, if anything, probably happier. Like, wow, you know, now the piece feels more like an original than, mm -hmm. you know, a, a print. Sure. Sure. And they were just, you know, they were expecting a print. So it, it actually, you know, wows the client. So, oh, I was just going to ask you about that um, on pricing um, out your embellishments. Now, how do you, how do you do your pricing in uh, differentiation to your, you know, regular these are just a print um they're not hand embellished how do you uh kind of you know come up with your pricing for them because you're, pu you're putting extra time into these like you were saying about an hour or so um when you're when you're painting uh so how have you come up with a pricing structure for your embellished prints yeah good question 
So for me, it's kind of knowing what is your value. Like, what do you value an hour of your time, an hour of your life? And you know, for me, I had to kind of reflect on, you know, when I worked in corporate America, I was making X amount, you know, an hour. Well, as my technique and and my skill level has gotten better, you know, so have my prices. So what I'm currently doing is if, you know, a print is, let's just say it's 75. Well, what I do is I'll multiply it by two. So, you know, if it's a $75 print, well, then it's going to be $150 embellished print. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, that's how I'm currently, you know, creating so, my price so structure. So you pay 75 to have a print made, you're selling it for 150. 150. Okay. You know, some uh, and it uh, depends on the size. Yeah, like this yeah, would obviously. this would obviously be a very uh, this is going to be a higher price point. But yeah. if it was a flat, let's just say sixteen by twenty, or um, I'm trying to think of some of the more recent sizes that I've been printing. Yeah, I would say like a sixteen by twenty. We're looking at you know a price point around one hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah. And there are some. Uh, originals that I would not offer as an embellished print mm -hmm. because I know that the level of detail or the amount of time it would take for me to embellish it, it would it would be, you know, several hours. Mm -hmm. And for me, you know, when I create, it's it's essentially kind of an extension of how I'm emotionally doing. Like um, I create because it's an expression of something that I'm feeling. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you're visiting back. A print or you know a work that you made a year or two years ago mm -hmm. your heart might not be in it so do you mm -hmm. really want to spend five hours with something that you know more feels like a job or do you want to you know spend it where it's like wow i spent five hours and and i loved it i mm -hmm. i loved every minute of it because you know i can tell you that this piece i finished it two weeks ago so when when i'm you know embellishing it it's like i love it mm -hmm. you know it, it still yeah. feels yeah, like a Crap. Yeah, crap. I feel like you can command actually probably more on your embellishment yeah, now I, locally. I, I, was, I was I was didn't want to quite oh, no, worry it this way, that. but I felt man, you know, your you, buyers are getting a real bargain. They are. Yeah. Um, I like I said, I think you're locally. Um, uh, you know, you're becoming an art name here, being shown uh, right now at La Cantera mm -hmm. the Gallery. There is a is it the San Antonio Artist Collective? I believe this yes. in the gallery, and uh, you have your own basically room there now and I, I noticed that your pieces tend to sell pretty quick uh so that right to me should be a cue out right there um you, you're actually in demand and I mean I hear your name in the art circles uh around right now so I was like I I was really glad that you wanted to do this and uh um so yeah you can I think you can so just you know maybe to your to your collectors your <laughs> prices need to you know can come up um, I have an artist that uh, we used to sell his Jaclay canvas prints um, uh, in Austin. He's out of California. And some of his hand embellished canvases would go for about 6,000 on it. Oh, wow. And, uh, you know, so he's, again, because he's commended and his originals would sell so fast. It was hard for the collectors to even, maybe even sometimes get to see the original in person because it would sell um, during the show so fast. Um, so. His hand embellishments were offered out to all of his different galleries, and it, that was the way he made them special. They weren't numbered series prints. He actually just did them as hand embellishment. Everyone has a little slight differentiation in it, and I think that's why he, he's always been able to keep his prices so, that high. So the lesson to some of our viewers is, is uh, you may be selling your prints, but you may be missing on a golden opportunity if you're not embellishing mm -hmm. your prints yeah you're just printing and selling the prints now that's easy to do it, it you know in comparison you know because there's there's no extra work involved but you know that little bit of extra work and uh like the state you know you spent maybe about an hour mm -hmm. on it you know you're you 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 know time is money but you know yes. it, it it made that extra hour may be well worth it mm -hmm. if you're considering your yeah, uh, and so let me let me ask a question that's uh, kind of, uh, and I I love talking about the business aspect of it. I'm going to talk more about this, but one of the things uh, uh, I've written about embellishing, I've done embellishing of of, of prints myself, and uh, um, one of the 
questions that comes up that that's asked me, and and I, and I have my own opinion. And I've heard artists say different things, but you I, right now we're you're embellishing on a stretch and mounted canvas, and I think mm -hmm. you you started to mention this earlier. Is there a reason you do you prefer embellishing on stretch and mounted, or do you prefer to embellish on unmounted and then stretch and mounted it later? I just do it flat and. I let the clients figure out if they want to well, stretch, stretch it themselves or if they will, you know, what I've seen from clients is they usually just buy the glass, you know, it's flat and they put it right there. You know, it's matted, you know, mm -hmm. outside where my signature is. You find it's easier to apply the paint when it's flat versus stretched and mounted because that's what I've found is there's a little give in that canvas, which, you know, if you're, if you're a painter, you might be used to that, but is it, when it comes to embellishing, you, you, you find having a like a rigid flat surface behind it makes it easier to to embellish uh, to embellish yeah well i'm or, also a mother of two so what happens is i have to <laughs> like in little little yeah so i have to be very flexible with where i can work and so it's usually you know when when my children are at home i'm painting my studio but when my children are home i'm in the kitchen you know so i'm making dinner and now they're eating and so now i'm like maybe on the side and so it works out really easy Trying to kind of not to spill on the food on, on oh the yes <laughs> yes oh yeah they know like you know leave this area <laughs> so um yeah i i actually prefer just to do it on a flat surface mm -hmm. uh you know sometimes i will hang things on the wall and paint on my wall too mm -hmm. like in the house just because you know you got to be flexible and for me I, I love creating so you know if i can create and watch the kids and you know do it all I'll try and do it. <laughs> now, um, going back to the business side of things, um, uh, now you, you're, oh, the, and that's that's classic jump off one of those happy little. Yeah, there's a happy mistake. mistake. And so, and so I'm just gonna try and recover it. And see, the colors aren't exact, and that's okay. Now this part, I'm just gonna. And, and, and here's the thing: is the beauty behind paintings is, you know, uh, there's certain style of painters that just paint to a certain sense of realism and perfection but you know in some respects you know some might think you know having these little kind of you know painting outside the lines or whatever that adds some interest to, to, the, I agree. to the painting yeah and so uh so i i usually don't unless i'm i'm the painter <laughs> I, I i i see those those little air what you some might call errors is kind of given that painting extra character extra points of interest as well it yeah. makes it look like a painting it makes it look like yeah. a work of art versus a photograph now there's nothing wrong with really trying to capture realism in your yeah. paintings but that's a that's a whole style that that that's really kind of unique to itself but um anyway but i, I want to ask you uh now you, you you're selling your work in galleries um yeah. the originals in galleries are all of your embellishment sales, are they all happening? Or are, are you doing these on your own? These are all, yes. So um, selling on your own both your galleries own. that I'm in, they sell exclusive original artwork. So I'm in uh, New Orleans and here in San Antonio. So both of those galleries, you know, will only take my original. So I sell my originals and my prints through my own personal website. Mm -hmm. And and that's worked well. What, what's your website address on? So it is um, W. Thank you. It's uh, Mary Jean. Let's see. Okay. Wish you didn't put me on the spot now. <laughs> I have your portfolio, so oh. I'd have to look it up. For you. And actually, if you're following oh, us on, um, it's going to be the Mary Jean Runke, right? Is that right? Yep. Uh, dot myportfolio dot com. You got it. And, and we'll, we'll post that link uh, yes. at, at some point in the uh, in now. The you do have a question really quick uh, um, coming in from the chat here. Jan is asking, uh, will you embellish with textured uh, paint on the background similar to the original? Great question. So I will not be. So when um, my style is usually to have this white textured, this is titanium white. It's a heavy body acrylic on the original. Uh, what I've experienced though is if I embellish this, it's very hard to do a color match to what the print white is. So white is a very difficult one to match. Yes. Yeah. 
So um, for any of my embellished prints, I will not touch the background. Uh, now I will use ink where I've used ink. So I will embellish this with ink um, and I will paint anywhere where there was color. But yeah, white, um, I've tried it before on a print. And what would happen if I was to do it here, if I just started, you know, taking a palette knife and making smears of titanium white, I would also then have to get the white in every single spot here. Otherwise it would look like this painting has spots. And, uh, you know, some people might like that, but I guess I'm too critical of my work. I, I just well, I won't do it. One of the thing, and this comes from, um, being in the printmaking field that I think people might might not be aware of is that when with white, you know, the the how the white reflects the light in in paint, you know, pigments, whether it be oils or acrylics, it's going to reflect differently than it might, you know, the a white ink might. So even when you do match a white or come very close to matching a white. The way the light will reflect off the two can be much different. Mm -hmm. So, so you know, again, you know, matching those whites is is uh, always going to be difficult. Mm -hmm. yeah. And also, just because, uh, again, depending on your your acrylic or your whatever you're using, if you're using like that acrylic with the gloss into it, um, not only just the matching, sometimes that uh, that gloss texture just doesn't meet as well i think um uh sometimes on there it, it kind of you don't know exactly where to put that stroke you know what i mean like a, if you want to make it like the ridge where you're seeing the strokes in the canvas and you add it um i think sometimes if it's a matte canvas and we were talking about this with the belgian linen with the she was originally going to mm -hmm. use a belgian linen with the white on there it's very smooth very, it's very, very smooth, smooth very surface. yeah and it's very you know kind of like a gloss to it yeah, yeah. so if you're printing or if you're using well, ink sad. yeah if you're using ink or something it may not apply as well which again that and uh people ask us again all the time uh to give suggestions for that uh what they're embellishing and as you can see even like with mary jean here it's a lot of testing um different materials and, and media and sometimes the sample kit is great to um, so, uh, the sample is good to use so that you can uh, go ahead and um, and paint on. And I don't know, I, I have some friends who are artists that use the sample kit kind of there and they have different uh, and inks and paint. Yeah. yeah, and they yeah. use that yeah. to see how it, it adheres. Um, because you know you can uh, it's nice to go ahead, like you were saying, you can sometimes buy your whole print and uh, you might have a happy accident on it, um, but if you if you're really trying to first kind of figure it out, uh, sometimes that sample kit is great to do that. And if you're local, you can always walk back in here. We'll give you another uh, sample of a particular media if you need one. Now, have you tried uh, embellishing uh, paper prints? Yes. And what tell tell us about your experience? Now, I, the okay. reason why I asked, okay, is yeah. because it's a question we get all the time. And I, and I will tell everyone that's watching uh, that it works for some artists and it doesn't for others. <laughs> yeah. Tell us about your experience and why. Okay, so for me, it reminded me of when I did a mural on drywall. <laughs> so, so if if you're used to doing painting on canvas, you're used to a certain amount of dry time. You're used to a certain feel of the contact between the brush and the paint meeting the surface of that canvas. So if you're using paper, it's it has you know more pores. So it's it's going to just suck that acrylic paint. It's going to suck that moisture right into it. And for me, I mean, what it would do is if I was to take you know my paints, I would just get a stroke and it's already like dry. Mm -hmm. So. It, then it didn't look at all. I couldn't get the same kind of feel in, you know, that was in the original into that print. Okay. So I can tell you it didn't work out. Yeah, <laughs> and, and, and that, that's interesting because we, we get different people. Ex and, and this is for people watching is that if you want to embellish your paper prints, uh, it's hard for us to provide you, uh, you know, an idea as to what you're you know, going to experience because it's going to depend upon the paints you're using, the type of paper you're using, 
it's it's it, it there's a lot of inconsistencies with what we hear some people say that the inks will bleed into the paints mm -hmm. um uh, i haven't seen that myself but i could see how that could happen but if you're trying to you know it, oh it, you know, yeah using too much water or, or a mistake maybe. happened too so on canvas mm -hmm. so you're an artist i'm sure you've done this technique you make a mistake and you grab a little mm -hmm. saliva or you know you take your a little bit of paint water hopefully it's not dirty and <laughs> you try to rub it off on paper you try to rub it off you just smear rubbed your print and there's no way you can recover like there's you got you, you got a, a a smudge spot that you, you just yeah yeah you gotta live and, with it and, and the reason being uh, uh, people may not be aware of uh and next month we'll go in a little bit more detail we're going to talk about the types of inks uh used for fine art printing and uh but for most of you the majority of your fine art your clay your high end clay prints are going to use a water-based we call them aqueous inks which is a uh, water it acts as the carrier of the pigments so you're just suddenly you're you're converting a cured uh ink into a wet ink and so when you apply any kind of whenever you apply any kind of water now uh, it doesn't mean that every time you apply moisture or water to to these inks, it's always going to you know start to run or anything like that. Because you know, like I said, we we get mixed you know results. But one of the things that we're doing here that that people might not be aware of, because the the canvas we chose is we're not using water based inks here. So these inks are going to hold up a lot better. These are solvent based inks. So when you're applying a water-based paint to a this artisan canvas, you're not going to get the inks running if you apply any moisture. So this is one of the things we tell people if you are going to embellish your, your prints, consider printing on canvas, but more specifically the artisan canvas, because that's going to, you know, those inks are going to be on their you know bonded to that surface much better yeah i've never seen i've never seen your inks yeah uh you know and, due to my wet paint you know merge yeah. with it where it's yeah the, the only time it becomes kind of iffy uh i, I hear is if, if you're doing if you're using paint thinner mm -hmm. oh yeah uh and uh because the paint thinner is it, it breaks down solvents and or you know as you know so that's <laughs> it's kind of like applying uh water to water-based things basically but uh do you put any sort of you you put any sort of top coat mm -hmm. before or after uh after okay. so i i treat it just like the original mm -hmm. so uh, whatever varnish you used on your original you use the same varnish on on your print because you want to be able to you know you don't want the paints not that i predict they would yellow but you know it it's going to keep the work, um, you know, it's going to preserve it. Mm -hmm. um, because I use inks, I'm afraid that if I didn't seal it, it would smear. I would hate for a client to own a piece and then it smears. Mm -hmm. Or they they had it in a place in their home where the sun was on it all the time and now it's faded, you know, 10 years from now. Mm -hmm. So absolutely treat your embellished prints like an original. Because you don't know what type of environment it's going to be going into. How does uh, the archival work with that, James? Like, like Bruce, you're saying, would it, the ink, uh, would the, the, I guess the media like paint and stuff probably change color first before the print or how would that work with all of our archival uh, papers well, and canvases? You know, uh, you really, it, it really shouldn't have too much of an impact. Um, just, you know, the, when the reason uh, why many of our papers and canvases, the ones that are archival or archival, is because the internal makeup of the paper. So it, it, it's, you know, what goes on the surface uh, will impact it. Mm -hmm. But if you're, you know, you shouldn't have anything to worry about unless you're applying some sort of solution or chemical, you know, uh, on top of the print that would damage mm -hmm. The the, the the artwork and and you know you're not gonna 
you know, your your typical paints and your and varnishes and so forth, they're not going to damage the paper like that. So um, so it, that wouldn't, you know, I, that's not something uh, I wouldn't think anyone would have to worry about. Hmm, that's good to know. Mm -hmm. So how, yeah, like I said, now you've been doing, I was talking about how you probably came to us about February last year, uh, and you've just kind of started offering these uh, embellishments. How have they been received from the people that have been collecting your works um, as originals? Uh, well, I can tell you anyone who's bought an original, they stick with originals. Yeah. It's like, you know, there's some people, they just, they only want originals. Mm -hmm. But the individuals who, um, usually it's like a, a husband who his wife wanted that original, but he, maybe it got sold. You know, yeah. it was sold, or you know, the price point of over a thousand dollars was too much. So they usually message me saying, "Hey, can I get that print? You know, but can you embellish it for me?" And mm -hmm. sometimes they even ask for a certain size. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Um, but I, you know, clients I've had repeat clients who do embellishments. Mm -hmm. You know, they want me to have you know offer an embellished print of. A certain work mm -hmm. i think well that's interesting it's, yeah it's really good because actually i think almost that creates your um an, another buyer base that grows with you and eventually they become original buyers you know yes. what i'm saying um so that's that's interesting to to hear is like your feedback and you were mentioning that you sell these you know on your website and, and um and i guess your social and where have you found the best platform for selling your hand embellishments? For me, it's through my personal website because mm -hmm. I'm a firm believer that an artist is the best person to market themselves. So for me, I spend a lot of, I say about 40% of my time is managing my business and it's connecting with clients. It's when someone makes a comment on my post or mm -hmm they write something on TikTok. It's me, you know, writing back to them, telling them thank you, that engagement. So uh, for me, I've been doing really well, actually selling my own work through my website. Mm -hmm. And don't get me wrong, I do sell through galleries, but usually what happens is I try to sell it on my own for the first two weeks. Mm -hmm. And then I open it up to the galleries because, you know, the galleries have long-term clients. You know, as someone who I've been painting for the last 10 years, but I've only been doing this full time for now a little over a year. So a gallery is a wonderful platform to tap into a new client base that you may not have access to. Um, but social media will definitely provide you with, you know, good clients because I know that I have individuals who every day they come on to, you know, Instagram to see what is she working on because they're just so curious of, what is she creating and how is she doing it? And, you know, I express kind of what maybe I'm going through. Mm -hmm. And sometimes people can relate with that. So they feel um, an emotional connection with the piece because they've seen it, you know, from a blank canvas to, you know, something that's, you know, empowering, inspiring, mm -hmm. uh, you know, like this work. Yeah, and, and this gets into uh, buying from social media, but one of the things that social media does for uh, artists nowadays is it creates a personal connection with from, mm -hmm. from between the buyer and the artist. Mm -hmm. So they are more likely to value that painting versus if they, you know, see it in a gallery mm -hmm. and they they say, oh, you know, you know, that's a beautiful painting gallery. I want to buy it, but they don't. They may not have that personal connection to the artist. They've never communicated with that artist so that's and, one of the advantages you have mm -hmm. and cool. she does very very well on her social because i oh, follow her okay. on a bunch of different platforms um like i said this is how yeah, i kind yeah. of became familiar with her work as well um and, and you do you do a very good job at that uh and that's what i think has made you i think so successful is the way you've embraced social media and and utilized it so i really hope a lot a lot of artists if y'all go on to instagram uh, and follow her and again i'll have that on the, the youtube as well um and you know if you've seen our instagram post we have uh her instagram handle on there follow her and and watch because you know sometimes learning from your peers is like the best education you're going to get is it, you won't find it in an art school sometimes i think that's one thing art school probably does not teach you is how to market yourself and not many have really gotten on to uh, 
checking and seeing how to utilize um, social media. So, you know, learn from your fellow peers. Let's see. So, let me have a question here from Jan. So, you only do embellished prints uh, or prints of previously sold work? Um, no. So, um, it's just that I have an inventory issue. So, majority of my work is sold. Mm -hmm. And um, so, good problem. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, that's a good thing. But, um, you know, even if, like, before this piece sold, I had an embellished option available for clients. So they had three options. They could buy the original, they could buy it as an embellished, or they could buy it as a standalone, you know, uh, print on Artesian Canvas. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, thankfully it did sell right away, which was great. But, um, you know, usually if you're on my website right now, it's going to look like that. <laughs> um, but if, if you're kind of in the beginning stage of whenever I posted it, you know, you have the option of buying the original. Too. Yeah. And Jan has so she has the same problem. I guess with hey, the inventory. That's good, so good, good. Um, The and for artists that have that problem, um, what I suggest, like I said, I've been an artist assistant for over seven years. It's getting those nice digital captures of oh. your art. And Jan and I were, uh, Mary Jean and I were talking about this about uh, getting that, thing, especially before it goes into a private collection, and getting it photographed well um i like to take some things and make them at 1200 dpi and i'll magnify them 250 to 300 percent and really good, good i overboard, oh you? do i do they're huge you ought to see this terror drive my mom can't believe i've gone through this much but the thing about it is um i'm able to take uh, an artist from new jersey had asked me about doing this because he wanted to do a uh, commercial printing an airport um from one of the cities in new jersey's asked about um uh, uh, what do you call it? Would he be able to have that work printed on like a wallpaper or a commercial grade thing that he could, they could plaster up there because they'd like to, and I said, you know, he was very concerned is he's trying to go up to 16 by 20 and, you know, he saw pixelation in the thing. And that's because he captured with just the cell phone stepping three feet away and taking the picture. So what's nice about um, going that big is that archived piece in there is able now to be utilized for some really nice big commercial uh, projects. Sure. So I thought that was kind of neat. And again, go, going from large to small is never going to be a problem. <laughs> you know, it's, yeah. a, it's only when and you want to decide. Small, she, she did bring up, you know, uh, if you go too small, you it's kind of hard to embellish. Mm -hmm. you know? um, uh, just because you know, unless you have a very you know, microscopic, you know. Oh, there's uh, there's people who paint on rice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, we'll, 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 we'll let them do that. We'll, 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 so there's, yeah, there's, I don't have an interest in there, that. There's a different yeah, talent skill, and uh, there, there's probably an eyeglass place somewhere out yeah. there that loves those people. So, um, uh, speaking of uh, capturing the artwork, like like you mentioned, tell us about what is your process. Mm -hmm. Um, let, let's go through the whole entire process, um, just so, so we're clear with everyone. What is, you know, so, so you have your original piece, okay, and you, uh, um, it, you want to make a print of it. So what is right. the first, what is the first thing that you do once that you complete that, that painting? Okay, so I live on a farm, so I know that I can get my best lighting on a day where the skies are gray. Um, so it's not direct light. So I kind of just wait until I get the right lighting outside. And I've got an, a special area that I shoot at my house where I feel like, you know, I've got the nails and it's an open space. They can hang flat. You know, the surface is good. So um, when I can tell it, you know, the lighting's good for me, I'll hang the work there. I set up my tripod. I put on, I, I have a Canon M50. So I put that on there and, and I shoot it in manual. So I want to get as much uh, detail as possible in that, you know, shot that I'm taking. Um, so I photograph it. And then um, me, I immediately go to my Mac and then I download the file. I put it into Lightroom. When it's in Lightroom, I then, you know, edit it, uh, crop it, color modify it, uh, remove any kind of blemishes. You get a lot of, um, sometimes when you're painting on a, you, sometimes there's like where the canvas kind of 
pops through like little tiny dots. Mm -hmm. I'm sure there's a noise, like a, a word for it. Mm -hmm. but I don't know what it is, but I'm editing all those out. Like the imperfections of the canvas on there, yeah. Yes. And then for me, because I just got done with the work, I'm usually very excited. So I've got high hopes, like, oh man, this is gonna be, this is gonna be a TikTok, it's gonna go viral. Cause you know, I don't know if you're on TikTok, but if you're an artist and you're not utilizing TikTok, yeah. please tonight create an account. I probably make 80% of my clients through TikTok. So, um, and those are new clients, right? These are people you never not met, have never met diff all over the nation, uh, out of the country. Yeah. Um, so what I do is I usually put an art process video then out on TikTok right away. And then that will really let me know, is this going to be a popular, like, is this a hit or is this going to be like, you know, is this good or is this great? And, um, I will then just kind of wait. And if, if I get a sale within that day, I know, okay, this is good. So then I place my order with Finer Works and I usually order 10. So it might be five or 10, but I'm going to do like a really short run and just kind of see, okay, how popular is it? Do I get any emails requesting for a larger size? Certain things like that. So that's, that's my process from when I finish the work, getting the photo, editing it, putting it on social media to kind of really grasp what am I, what are my fans thinking? And yeah, hopefully I place more orders of that same print because I have had to do that too, where, okay, now I've sold out of, of that 10. So now I got to order another 10 and maybe I go with a different size mm -hmm. uh, or maybe I try a different paper. Mm -hmm. So even, you know, my recent work that I just picked up today, it's on a completely different paper than I usually use, uh, you know, Try different things. Yeah. See what your clients like. What? Um, and so, and then, uh, what? What? Oh, first of all, what? what uh, you have your own website. Uh, you use Shopify. Do you use Wix? What? What? Oh, good you, question. What are your yeah. platform? What are your sales yeah. platforms? Yeah. So, um, so I actually am using Square, but it's tied into portfolio. Mm -hmm. So with an Adobe subscription. So if you get the Adobe Creative Suite you get a, a ton of different applications. And most people don't, they're not aware that portfolio is included. So what portfolio is, is it's, it's essentially a website. So you, it's a platform where you can develop a website, you can use their templates, you can easily you know, put your photos of your artwork in there, write a caption, create different pages or series, and then you can create a hyperlink. So I hyperlink it to Square. And um, so when they click on the click here to purchase this original work of art or a clay print, it brings them to Square, which shows them their options. It gives them the checkout option. Yeah. So, and, and so the option you give them is the original and an embellished print or uh, if, if that's supposed to. If, you if I want to offer it. Yeah. yeah. And uh, or just a uh, uh, open edition print or at least uh, signed and numbered print. They're all signed and numbered. So that's okay. another thing I know we've talked about this when I've come in here of, you know, well, maybe I could just use geo galleries and I can put it on there. But uh, the reason why I haven't gone with geo galleries is for me, it's still really important for me that I sign it and that I number it. I, I, I don't know why, but there's just something about it to me that it, it just, I feel like there's a bigger value. Um, you know, that when someone gets that print, they know that my hand touched it. Mm -hmm. I put a signature on it and it's numbered. So have you, you been approached by any galleries that are interested in carrying your prints, even numbered or edition? I know the ones that you're in right now are original. Have you been approached yet by any galleries that are interested in carrying prints for you? And if so, how would you? You know, the first gallery I was in here in San Antonio, they were open to prints. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I didn't bring it in there. Um, I just stuck with originals at mm -hmm. that time. So it, it is an option. The thing about prints though, too, is if you're gonna put them in a gallery, you need to spend the time to mat it in the frame because presentation is everything. So even my originals, I'm framing majority of them now. I would say 90% of all of my artwork is framed because I want, when someone buys it, I want them to be able to open it out of the box and hang it. And if they don't like the frame, well, then they could flip it out but I haven't had any complaints. So I think that's why I haven't, you know, even tried to pressure, you know, a gallery saying, hey, would you be open to selling my prints? 
we, so I hope that answers your question. Yeah, I, I've had a, an artist out of Houston and she did the same thing. She's talking about how basically how close the exacto knife gets to her hand. I'm thinking your hands are a little important there. We actually do, uh, you know, presentation kits here. Um, so some artists, as I was telling her too, you know, you can have your presentation kits done. It's all done. They, they have the hinged um, kind of folder like with the window opening. And then those are archival sleeves um, on them. So they're individually sleeved, I believe, right there. And uh, to get that and then drop them off for her shows and stuff, I'm like, this is the time saving that it would give her. Um, and just also the insurance that her, her hands are not ever sliced open with the, <laughs> So uh, that is something we offer um, what, here too. What about, um, what, uh, what do you, what do you offer with the prints? Do you offer like a certificate of authenticity? Mm -hmm. or, uh, no, yeah, I've seen others. I have seen artists do that. Um, I do not because I feel like my signature is, is it, mm -hmm. and really it, they, they're small batches. So you know, for the most part, when it's sold out, it's sold out. Mm -hmm. And and my goal right now is to create a new work every week. So I have new content coming out all the time. So um, I feel like, like all artists, we're growing. So the more that we do something, the better we get at it. Mm -hmm. And I feel like, you know, as I'm growing, there's a higher demand for a lot of the new stuff, if anything. So it's kind of like, you know, where I started, those aren't as popular anymore as, you know, the new stuff that's coming out. And we got about 15 minutes towards our end, but I wanted to ask you, what are the cons that you've run into uh, with hand embellishment, or if any. Okay, um, good question. Um, cons. Well, let's put it, that, what do you least, what, what do you like least? About okay, <laughs> well, I mean, I could go back to kind of, um, like I'd mentioned before, for me, creating is a, it's an emotional thing for me. Um, it's something that I love to do. If I can do it every moment of my life, I would. Um, so it's sometimes you have to visit old work. Mm -hmm. And when you visit old work, sometimes it opens up an emotion. <laughs> yeah, an emotion. And maybe you've already worked through that emotion. Or, you know, you know, it's it's just interesting that it's kind of like a song on the radio. You could hear a song and it brings you back to like when your heart was broken mm -hmm. by your high school, you know, prom date or something. And so um, you know. For me, sometimes I've moved on from that. So, you know, that might be it, mm -hmm. is that, you know, just sometimes having to revisit work that my heart isn't there anymore or my heart's healed. Mm -hmm. And so. So it feels like you're just kind of trudging through the <laughs> yes. process versus it's, 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 it becomes work and not art. Yes. Art, and don't art, not creating, because yeah. work is going to create art. That's one thing that artists hate. Yeah. I, I, yeah. Know artists, I mean, it, I'll do it because I yeah, love that, it still. You yeah, know, but not, not that artists are opposed to work. It's just, yeah. well, like everyone else, if, if I have a choice between doing something I enjoy and working, I, I'm going to do something I enjoy. Unfortunately, sometimes it's too kind of <laughs> me. Uh, and and <laughs> that happens with a lot of artists. Yeah. And, and, and it's, uh, yeah. when, when art and your, 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 what you enjoy doing, which is art, when they start to kind of merge together, it becomes difficult to do. It's it, it enjoying what you like to do, which is for most of our viewers is, is the art aspect becomes tedious. And mm -hmm. so it, 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 yeah, so, yeah, so I get it. And, and we, you know, and it's not just artists, it's photographers, photographers, you know, they, they love to capture images, but then suddenly they find themselves after wedding, you know, 132, they're like, you know what? The thrill is gone. Yeah, you know, I'm just, I, I'm over I'm it. just pressing the button. Yeah, and, and I, so. I think one of the challenges that I have heard with, you know, friends that do hand embellishment is, you know, a lot of people who use our services use drop shipping with us. And again, because you don't have to worry about, you know, signing anything, they just go out here is, again there is that aspect of, of work not only not just you know painting um into a hand embellished canvas but now you got to go into the shipping and mm -hmm. now you got to go ahead into packaging that to ensure that it doesn't just like an original it doesn't get banged up in transit um 
so there's a little bit of a, uh, I want to say, anxiety with it shipping because again, just like an original, you want it to get there safe, and if it gets, you know, if it gets bounced around like a basketball um, in yeah. care in in transit, it's like losing an original because mm -hmm. you know all the work you do. Have, yeah. yeah. Have, have you have experienced that? Yeah, I hate to say. <laughs> um, no, I, I actually, I just shipped off an embellished print today. So because I sell all of my prints through my website, I'm used to doing the packaging. So Tuesdays are usually my packing day. So today was like a whole, you know, kitchen table was full of packing <laughs> materials and, and packing. Um, thankfully, I haven't had any issues. You know, the only time I've had issues with shipping prints is when I framed them and it was glass. Oh, yeah. Yeah. A lot of variables can affect that package between, you know, when you drop it off at, you know, UPS or the post office. Oh, yeah. we, we, that's why we don't, uh, our friends at Finer Works, you know, we, it, it'd be nice if we could offer like museum right. quality, yeah, yeah. museum grade glass to our customers. And technically we can, but it, it just, the chances of them surviving shipping is, is very difficult. And I wanted to show off one of your oh, paper yeah. prints here. Do you want Absolutely. to talk a little bit about how you handle? These now you say you normally do fine art velvet paper um, on your on your uh, things and this is on an um, archival mat paper. And, and this is a, a newer. Is this a yeah? This is a new painting. This one uh, I believe I released it on Monday of last week. So this is Wonderlust, and uh, this is actually the first in a new series of works that I'm doing. And uh, the hope is in a year for this to be launched as a children's book. So there, there is actually a story that presented itself as I was creating this raven with this adorable little curious kitty who has high hopes, you know, under the back of the raven. And um, and, and children's illustration even would look like this is, um, there's a huge market for this. Uh, Dr. Seuss, actually the gallery I work for in Austin, uh, none of his originals will ever be sold to private collection. Uh, so he is, uh, wife Audrey had done had met with a publisher who went ahead and did the prints and they are on uh, artboard uh, mounted some are what we call a zoo stretch kind of uh, canvas and those sell for quite a bit you know so there is a um, everybody has some kind of uh, especially when you're a child and you go ahead and get bond with the story the illustrations from books on there uh, the the illustrator for Harry Potter covered her artwork is also sold as prints and sells quite a bit. So mm -hmm. these are this is also another nice you know area um, to get into in the art industry. Now uh, uh, I'm zooming in on your signature. Now this is this is just a print. This is not intended to be embellished. But do you do anything with the signature for your embellished prints? Good question. So I usually remove it. So through the editing process. I will remove it if I can. So um, this yeah, one that, that one looks like it might be a little bit. I tricky. can't. Yeah, yeah, I could not remove it because the work is here. But uh, I actually do have uh, a licensing deal with a, a publishing company for some of my works, and I will remove the signature because it, it looks cleaner as a print without. Uh, now, even my own, if I'm going to be, because it comes back to me, I'm going to be signing and numbering them anyways. That way you don't have like two signatures. Um, also, sometimes when you're, you receive your print, the sharpness isn't always how you want it to be, like on a print. Yeah, especially so, if, if there's a little bit of camera shake or not, not quite in focus. So yes, yeah, so it, signature. It, 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 that's where it's noticeable. Mm -hmm. and, and that's where we tell people to say, is, is my image uh, high enough resolution for this print? And we, a lot of times we will we will look at the file. We can kind of tell right away whether or not you know it's going to have enough pixels. But we look at the signature. We zoom on the signature, and that signature is blurry, and that's a good indicator. Especially some artwork which is very kind of abstracty, and there's no. Well, not a whole lot of sharp definition, uh, but there's that signature, and you look at that signature as well. That signature is blurry, or that's pixelated. Mm -hmm. So uh, the resolution is good, but your your image is a little out of yes. out of whack. <laughs> well, and maybe some of your viewers have experienced that. So maybe you have some prints at your house right now, and those prints, 
you, when you look at it, you're like, oh man, the signature is blurry. It's, you know, it looks pixelated. This is a great opportunity to actually embellish that print because when you embellish a print, you can bring that detail right back in. Now, this one, I painted this signature, uh, you know, on the original, but I mean, let's just say I look at my, my pen work and I think, oh, well, that doesn't look, you know, as detailed. So I mean, you can just, you know, take, take your paint or take your pen or however you signed it and just go over it. And, and you can bring that sharpness right back into it. Mm -hmm. And, and you don't, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect because again, it's kind of like an original work of art, even though it's, it's a, a print and, um, you know, you're essentially kind of just tracing over what you initially had done. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you can use, um, you know, pen on your works. Uh, me, I'm, I'm very loose with my mixed media works. When I draw on the background, I'm, it's kind of like I'm scribbling in some ways and, and I like it. Um, but I, I make sure to work left to right. Now, if you're going to incorporate ink, go left to right because ink will smear and then you'll just have to paint over it and then start again. <laughs> well, Mary Jean, thank you so much for sharing your time and your talent and your experience with it because we really appreciate that. And there's a lot of people that are new to uh, printing and, and still want to have it. So I'm glad you're able to kind of encourage other artists who might be looking to do hand embellishments. Um, and we're excited to do all these uh, every month. I, I like doing them. Um, James and I have actually kind of get together and we brainstorm for the next uh, next kind of one we have coming up. And uh, James, you want to go ahead and I guess you can either you can switch over to your camera on yeah, here or go ahead and, um, if you want to unplug or unplug and let me get back change your camera over, over here. here. Oops, go ahead. sorry. Okay. And so. Um, so uh, you can tell us, because uh, uh, we were talking about uh, texture prints, and we have something amazing that we're working on here at Final Works. So if you kind of want to tell people what we're going to talk about next month. Okay, yeah, let me get my camera here. Okay, all right. Uh, and, and again, thank you so much. I mean, that was just incredible. Um, yeah, I, I wish I'd had the camera get, get that perfect smile of yours right now. So, uh, uh, so uh, you know, one of the things we have been talking about is, uh, uh, you know, embellishing prints and, and, you know, embellishing your artwork is really, to me, there, there's, you know, when you take a print, that's the next best thing to an original. Um, you you can't you can't beat that, okay? Uh, because it, it is personal. It's organic. It's it's not uh, it's 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 not just a copy. Um, so, with that said, I'm kind of reluctant to <laughs> to, to talk about what you know some of the things we we have planned, but. Uh, one of the things we, we will be talking about next uh, um, next month is we will be discussing the different inks that we use uh, for printing, um, uh, printing fine art. And, and again, I feel it's like this kind of like, uh, it's just not as exciting as what we just had <laughs> here today. Um, uh, hopefully less technical issues though. <laughs> yeah. So, um, Anyway, uh, we are uh, on the, we're in the beginning phases of taking Final Works uh, printing to a whole new level with a whole new level of, of uh, product offerings for wall art for display when it comes to printing. And one of the things we, will, we are looking at doing is offering actual textured prints. Now, uh, what I mean by that is prints that which where we're not just printing the colors of the artwork, but also the texture of the artwork. Okay. And, and this is all done digitally, but this, and I, I don't have an example to show you yet, but uh, we're, we're talking about creating uh, prints of original uh, or, or prints of your original work that also is we're printing the colors and we're printing the textured brush strokes at the same time that actually match that original. And we're not talking about some 
long, drawn out, expensive process, because this technology has been around for a while. We're going to make this available online, at, you know, at, at, at a reasonable price, you know, comparable to what you're already paying. We're not looking at, at you know, these huge increases in, in cost in order to take advantage of this technology. And I think this technology, it, like I said, it's been out there for a while, but I think it's time to bring it to uh, mainstream artists. Before you, you, the only places you'd, you'd, you'd see these artists, the very you know, renowned artists offering prints like this. I think it's time for us to bring it, you know, to to the independent artists, you know, the, the ones that are representing themselves. So I'm very excited by by this uh, technology. We call it 2.5D printing. <laughs> Now, uh, uh, and just kind of as a little kind of kind of heads up, you know, this uh, technology does not print at the same level that your typical clay does. Your clay printing is, you know, the pinnacle of of color gamut and accuracy. So, you know, there is, you know, there is a little bit of 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 give when you when you're engaging in some of these alternative printing technologies but still the the quality is is incredible um and uh and then we're going to also be looking at printing on direct to different surfaces we're going to be uh we already started in enhancing our uh our uh printing on wood where we're offering you know where you can choose to have just a white base versus the natural wood look in our wood prints. Uh, but yeah, we're looking at some other options where we'd be printing direct to, uh, such as dye bond, which is kind of a, a, a aluminum composite, um, some uh, uh, printing directly to PVC panels, um, gator board, and uh, uh, we, we're, we're, we're debating whether or not uh, we want to offer glass, but possibly glass, you know, we, we mentioned the challenges of shipping glass. So uh, we have a few products that are glass products that, that we do ship and generally it's, it's not a problem, but you know, we, we, uh, they're not huge. So, uh, so it's, you know, packaging them is not difficult. And then we're also looking at the possibility. We're not certain yet, but the possibility of offering a, uh, another type of acrylic print. Right now we have the face mount acrylic print, which are in high demand with artists, but we wanna see if we can offer a more, but they're very expensive. They're very difficult to produce. And we wanna see if, you know, the possibility of offering, uh, you know, something a little, you know, a little bit more affordable at, you know, at a lower cost an acrylic print at a lower cost uh, by printing to these acrylics directly. Uh, so and we'll be talking about that um, next month even we'll, more detail. We'll talk about the, the printing technology that's be utilized. Uh, we don't have the technology yet. We're, we're we're eagerly waiting for it, and it's it's a pretty, you know, it's it's not something we can set up overnight. But uh, we we have been working uh, over the past you know number of days, weeks uh, to bring this to you. Also, we. We should have this all in place by next That's next good. month. Little showcases. Yeah. Um, but Mary, is there anything that you want to say? Any shows you have coming up? Anything that you where people might want to meet you and and uh, see you work? I know sometimes you do a live page at some of the shows and events. Just again, watch you on the social Aww. media. Your social media. Uh, <laughs> see everything coming up. Um, right now I'm working on. The, a solo show for Gallery Orange in New Orleans. So that's going to be happening around Halloween. Uh, now I do paint live periodically at the San Antonio Artist Collective, um, but I can't say I have a schedule because usually you know, being a mom of two, limited hours to create. Um, but when I get a moment to create, I'm usually in my art studio. Um, but if you want to follow my journey, you know, please find me on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, like I said, TikTok's where it's at. Um, you know, I'd appreciate you following my journey. Oh, no, that's good. Well, thank you. Wait. Thank you. And thank you again for your time and the talents here. We appreciate it. Uh, James, anything else that you wanted to add? So um, those that missed the, uh, that, where we lost the recording on, on YouTube, we will be 
Re yeah, we will be reposting this. So uh, unfortunately, we, a lot of live viewers on, on, on YouTube didn't get a chance to really watch, but uh, it, it'll get reposted and uh, for everyone. So uh, so you'll be able to watch this in, in, top, in its entirety. And then I'm sure Melissa will do some creative editing to <laughs> make that so so we don't look at we don't so we don't have to be as embarrassed about ourselves. <laughs> so um, uh, and then uh, coming up, what uh, this coming Thursday we have uh, Jim Landers, and he's we're going to be talking about uh, copyright. Yeah, and uh, I. I do really, I recommend that uh, artists watch this because these uh, principles governing copyright uh, that he's going to be talking about are also applicable to uh, uh, artists that are, whether or not they're, uh, you know, painting or if they're, you know, creating digital art, it, it, it all falls under the same, same laws and the same rules, basically. So uh, make sure you, you do watch uh, next Thursday with, with Jim. Yeah, this Thursday at, uh, at starting at 4, 4 p.m. Central Time to uh, 5.30 uh, with Jim Landers. So, all right, I, I don't have anything else. All right, well, thank you again, guys, for watching and bearing with um, our technical difficulties. We appreciate it. And I'm saying I'm glad, actually, this is the longest I've actually been at Fireworks in a year or so since <laughs> uh, COVID. So uh, we appreciate it. If you can, um, remember to like, comment on the social because that always helps not only us, helps the artists that we be posting stuff to. We appreciate it. So everybody have a great day and we'll see you all Thursday. Bye. And then I'll get you to end that, uh, James, because you are host.